Shalom, Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today I'm going to be uh, showing you, brothers and sisters, a, a few things. Um, a few beautiful things about, you know, identifying our people in the Eastern Hemisphere and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? I know you brothers and sisters have been hearing how we've been teaching how the gypsies are the southern kingdom and part of Israel. So we're gonna, a lot of brothers and sisters don't know, but. Doctrines. I should put this teacher and really think about what these brothers are saying and what they're teaching. So why would these brothers try to make Israel look Hermetic? Hey, well, wisdom is created at the gate of the spirit of your mind. You know, of your soul, of your heart. So, you need to fight for each other. We're talking about truth. This is this about truth at the end of the day. It's the more and more information that, that we're bringing out together. We're building on with each other. Out in the streets, bringing the word. There is even gypsies that are in the land of Israel today as we speak. And we're going to read about them today. Uh, learn about them and plus about uh, the Yemen Jews. We're going to talk about the Yemen Jews. We're going to talk about um, uh, the Damari Gypsies, the Roma Gypsies, uh, the Cobra Gypsies, you know what I'm saying? And show you brothers and sisters how all those people look like our people. And that's, and that's for, you know, to uh, also answer questions for uh, the Brother Mighty Hebrew and um, the folk camp because they keep asking us to show us our people all throughout Europe, <coughs> uh, Africa, North Africa, uh, the Middle East, Asia. And we're going to show you, brothers and sisters, today how the gypsies and things of that nature are spread out in each one of those nations. It doesn't matter what nation you type in. Of what country you're gonna find gypsies in that country and find uh, images of uh, what the people look like and things of that nature. I'm also going to address some of the points that my Hebrew and uh, and the folks have been saying. But then I have a you know surprise for brothers and sisters at the end. Well, I'm about the the gypsy part. Shalom Oscar. Shalom Jeremiah. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, a lot of brothers and sisters don't even know that um, that there are gypsies uh, in the land of Israel as we speak. We're going to learn about them, right? And they're called uh, Damari gypsies, right? We're going to read about them, okay? And it's titled, Jerusalem's Gypsies, right? The community with the lowest social standing in Israel. Okay, brothers and sisters, they have the lowest standing in Israel. Okay? The Damari Gypsy of East Jerusalem has struggled for many generations to overcome poverty, government in, um, indifference, and prejudice. Now a determined woman, Amun Slim, is trying to lead a quiet revolution. Right? And this is the lady here. Hmm. Does she not look like she could be a native or a Hispanic woman? Latino woman? Whatever label you want to say. The Lion's Gate in Jerusalem's old city is a bushy hub throughout the day. Large groups of tourists pass through it en route to the churches on the Via Dolorosa. While local hurry home or to prayers at the Al Asqua Mosque on the Temple Mount, Israeli police officers and border police stand watchful on the street corners here. Within the walls of the Muslim quarter, close to the gate is a tiny neighborhood called Bab Al Huta. Between the storefronts of the main street, Narrow entrances leads to a dark stairwell. Some of the house doors are brightly colored, others are old. Some have 
decorations painted in the, lin uh, in the lintels. Groaning clothing that stretched between the small, densely packed stone houses and children of varying ages run free unsupervised. Right? Ba'ahuta is a mixed neighborhood. A stranger would struggle, would struggle to guess its unique characteristic. The most of its residents are Dumari or Dom, Gypsy. Few people know such a community even exists in Jerusalem, says Dr. Niti Shavil Khalifa, curator of visual culture researcher at the Yukab Yazak Ben Vi Institute, currently working in an expedition devoted to dome gypsy life in Israel. Almost nothing has been written about them, and almost no research has been done, except for the study by Benville ben Institute director Yakuv Yanavi. Although they have lived there for 500 years, very little is known about them. They don't have it easy. They are regarded as the untouchable, the old city. No one wants to have anything to do with them. The 1500 member of this mysterious community are at the bottom of Israel's social and economic ladder. They are not isolationists. Whether they settled, they try to assimilate. They embraced the local region, Islam in the, uh, on the Middle East, Christianity in Europe, and adopted, and adopted the local norms, dress and language, the Dom Gypsy of Jerusalem speak Arabic and Hebrew. Today, it is hard to distinguish between a Dom and an Arab woman. Do you see that, people? So even a lot of those Arab women could be even uh, Damari Gypsies, right? Um, the Dom have packed away their colorful tradition, traditional clothing and folded away their tents a century ago when they moved into permanent housing. Nevertheless, because they are a closed community and have been stigmatized as nomads, thieves, and abductors, they are considered outcasts wherever they are. Because of their dark skin color, they are derogatory dubbed Noir, Black in Arabic. In Jerusalem, I want you people to remember that because we're going to go right back to that part. This is what the Dumar are known amongst, amongst the people around that, that area, right? As Noir, Blacks. Okay, so we're going to actually address, uh, you know, a lot of the sources. Uh, uh, what's his name? Judah Naz and, and those uh, those guys keep using about the black Jews all in, um, in Africa, right? We're going to see why they're saying these things. In Jerusalem, as with the, Ro the Roma... That's another gypsy uh, sect. That's what people don't understand. There, there are different gypsy sects. You have the Roma gypsies, you have the Damara gypsies, you have uh, Cobra gypsies. You have all different type of gypsies, right? But this one, right, let's talk about the, the Roma in Europe. Domi gypsies are the target of prejudice and phobia. Local children will not always play with the Dome kids. And the local schools make no special effort to keep them from dropping out at a young age. Like all Palestinians living in East Jerusalem, the, Do the Doma or the Dome Gypsies are residents, but not Israeli, um, Israeli citizens. They are entitled to social security allowances, but welfare and educational service are underdeveloped on the side of that city, let alone for a hidden community like the Dome, right? Hold on. So again, this is what they consider to be the black Dumari Jew, Dumari Jews. Do you not see these ladies? Do they not range in all different colors? Hold on. This is where we're going to start bringing up some pictures, right? We're going to uh, actually look. These are the Dumari Jews that they're talking about. These are the so-called black Jews that they're talking about. The Dumari Jews, right? Don't they look like our people? No, they don't look Hispanic. They can't pass for Hispanic. They can't pass for our, our native sisters. The 
here's back to the the, the, the Mari gypsies. This is what it means when they call them black Jews. Not that they look like Africans. That's the whole point. Shalom, brother. Uh, ben Kiel, Ben Israel. Shalom. I think that's Victor. Shalom. Don Carlos Velez. Right now, I'm showing people what the Dumari, uh gypsies look like if you guys are just tuning in basically what they call black Jews or gypsies that are in uh even Africa right drawings of what gypsies look like This is from the same article, what they consider black Jews. You know what I'm saying? You can you can see them, and they're clearly look Arab or look like our people, Shemitic, right? And again, this is why I keep telling you these brothers and sisters have to you know have to travel more and learn these things, right? Just like this uh, person right here. This is something that a lot of uh, so-called black Hebrew Israelites post all the mm -hmm. time. They'll post this guy. Let me see if I can pull out, actually pull it out, what they actually say. Hold on. And it reads, the Europeans claim to be Jews are nothing more than Hebrew speaking Gentiles. The late president of Egypt, Gamal Abdul Nazir, stated on television even though you know you can't prove this ever happened, or uh, well, this was said on television, it says the Jews will never be able to live here in peace because they left here black, but came back white. We cannot accept you, quote in 1952 supposedly, right? But again, he's a so-called Ishmaelite. He he claims that the Jews were his cousins, right? So if he's an Ishmaelite, what does he look like? Does he look like a so-called African man or does he look like a so-called like Hispanic man? Hmm. So if his contention was that the, the, the Jews left here um, black and came back white, but he acknowledges that they're his cousins, then what would the black Jews look like? Again, our people. Damari Jews. These are the black Jews that the president of Egypt were referring to. These are the black Jews. And again, who do the black Jews resemble? Do they resemble the so-called Negro or African man or do they resemble our people? booking out or are you guys seeing what I'm seeing I'm very sure he looks like probably one of you guys uncles right now you probably say oh that's uncle <laughs> that's uncle Julio right I said and you can look and, and again this is her family the founder of the gypsy of the, uh, the Damari school right this is her family this is what they said remember the article said because of their dark skin color this is what they're claiming right the Damari Jews are called blacks okay in Arabic but we all saw what again what they consider to be black Jews right Okay, let me just read back to where I left off. Okay, and it says, 
Well, let me back it up and read it again. Hold on. It says, In Jerusalem, as with the Roma in Europe, Dumi gypsies are the target of prejudice and phobia. Local children were not always played with was not always play with the Domi kids and the local schools made no special effort to keep them from dropping out at a young age. Like all Palestinians living in East Jerusalem, the Dome Gypsies are residents but not Israeli citizens. They are entitled to social security allowances but welfare and educational services are undeveloped on this side of the city, let alone for a hidden community like the Domi. This creates a situation where the level of illiteracy among the Domi is very high, while the level of unemployment in the community is close to 70%. Do you see how much those people are suffering over there? That only that 70% are unemployed? I want, I want brothers and sisters to really think about that, right? 70% are unemployed. Can you name one city in America where the so-called Negroes are have that high of an unemployment rate? You know what uh, the highest unemployment rate for Negroes in America is? It's in the District of Columbia at 12%. That's the highest it's been, 12% into the United States, 12%. But we have these people in Israel who are suffering to the point where 70% are unemployed. Now, that's not the only thing, right? Well, check this out. Um, we're gonna look up the natives in the tribes of this land, right? Look at this right here. These are the labor force partition rates among native, right? The blue line represents, the red line to is the total population, meaning all of the Americans, right? The blue line represents <laughs> uh, American Indians, right? Anywhere from 60 to 50%, right? Check this out, check this out. This is gonna blow your, your mind, right? Look at this, terrible statistics 15 native tribes with un with unemployment rates over 80 percent over 80 percent now let's go down the list and let's go look at these tribes right let's go they're gonna name it okay look at this this tribe right here this community right here look at the high unemployment 93 percent Okay, 1,200 members of that of, of, uh, of that clan, 93% are unemployed, right? Check out this tribe, 91% with 1,300 members of this tribe, right? 91%, that's number two. Now check out this tribe, 89% unemployment. They have 43,000 members of this specific tribe. Okay. Look at this tribe. Eighty-eight percent unemployment. They have a tribal enrollment of over fifteen thousand natives. Eighty-eight percent. You will never find a so-called Negro community in America higher than twelve percent. Twelve percent. No city. There's no city in America that you can go to. Chicago, California, New York. Pick it. Detroit. Don't matter not one city in there you're gonna see a community suffering at this high percentage of unemployment just like the Damari I just showed you the Damari in, in Israel the J Damari gypsies they're at 70% of unemployment the Apache tribe of Oklahoma 87% with 1800 members Standing Rock 86% with 6,000 members Little Travel uh, Bay Band, 86% unemployment with 4,000 members. Round Valley Indian Tribes, 86% with 3,700 members. Right? It says, this creates a situation where the level of illiteracy among the Dome is very high, 
while the level of unemployment in this community is close to 70%. None of the Dieters are Mount Slim, a dome gypsy in her mind, in her mid-30s, she was born and grew up in the old city. One of 10 children, 10 years ago, she established the Demaric City with the goals of straightening the local gypsy community and providing a showcase for the outside world. Okay? Now, this is the point that I wanted to show you, brothers and sisters, right? Because people keep talking about, you know, oh, the gypsies ain't this, the gypsies ain't that, right? You see the caps, you know, the camps, the, the so-called Negro lights have been, you know, um, basically mocking us. Oh, you guys or don't know what you're talking about. Don't know what you're talking about. Well, check this out, brothers and sisters, right? Like I said, brother, the information is undeniable to the point where, look, Look at this, brothers and sisters. This is a chart, a 12 tribes chart, right? Of 144,000, right? They call us, look, of course, the Yahawada is the Negroes, right? But look what they call the, the tribe of Dan, people. Dan, Black, Irish, and who? Gypsy. Now you guys have, now you brothers and sisters have even camps now that are putting it on their 12 tribe chart that the gypsies are Israel. It's funny, right? We're, we're, we're these clowns and everything like that, but now you have camps even proving or even putting on their chart that the gypsies are part of the 12 tribes. Doesn't necessarily have to be the tribe of Judah, according to them, of course. They don't, they're not going to give ancient watchmen all the credit for all that, right? But they did put it on their chart, and we caught them putting it under their chart. In fact, Ayash was the one who took that uh, that video. And hold on for a second. Uh, yeah, um, Ayash was the one that took that video, right? And he um, addressed those brothers and asked those brothers. Well, they knew who he was. And uh, they really didn't want to answer his questions. But he did take a picture of it to show proof that, yes, uh, these camps are, are, are starting to wake up. I've never heard of that camp. And again, like I said, the brother Ayash uh, uh, approached the brother. And uh, they didn't really want to talk about it. So, so yes. Like I said, the camps know that the gypsies are part of the part of the 12 tribe okay some of the tribe members get a casino check he said okay that's a that's a beautiful that's a uh, a beautiful question uh says i'll start asking a little questions for a second he says some of those tribe members get a casino check but do you know who is the richest casino in the western hemisphere and who is who was it run by sis right oh no my fault my brother yeah uh, Raymond Rodriguez can you see it Negro 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 only two natives the rest Negroes right this they own the Foxwood casino right meet the Indian owners of the largest casino in the western Hemisphere, Foxwood Resorts and Casino, and they give you the location and everything like that. Okay, so actually, yes, even Negroes have casinos, and they have one of uh, the largest in the Western Hemisphere. Western Hemisphere. Okay. Okay. So this is what again what they consider to be the Black Jews or Black Gypsies. Noir. According to the Israeli, okay. Now I'm going to address some of the folk and what the folk was uh, actually saying, and they actually made a video, and again. This is when you know they're desperate, right? 
the when they're so desperate. Okay, so now I'm part of the uh, you know I, I do kind of, well I do talk to the lions then right and focus on that it's on that group right. So this guy made a video from folk and in the, his four minute video he posts this biblical dictionary of under ham. Also he could try to say that look the mongrels Chinese Japanese Americans meaning Americans Eskimos right uh, Pacific Islanders are trying to say that they are the Canaanites right. Oh look at it. So let me get this right. We all seen Jeremiah Judah who's a part of the folk camp. He says that the Canaanites are the Lebanese people. Mighty Hebrew quotes from this book uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu which tells you that the Canaanites are uh, we're gonna read it. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna bring it out Ooh. that right the Canaanites were all black people right so mighty Hebrew believes that the Canaanites are black people other Africans he uh, specifically as he says other Africans um, this guy says that the so-called Asians the Mongols right or Canaanites Jeremiah Judas says the Lebanese you see how they can't even agree with each other they can't even agree with each other but you know what was what I found funny about his source that his source admits that what that Negroes are Hamites he tried to post this on his video to try to say you know the oh, look the Mongols are the Canaanites but not knowing that he's cutting his own people too Look, ham, also calm, literally meaning or hot, burnt, or dark, father of the mongloid and negroid races. So he actually cut himself with his own source. Again, this is what I keep telling you. This is what's silly about their arguments. So we already debunked about our people living all throughout these, these nations, right? And then mighty Hebrew basically made a video about the people of Peru right okay this is again this is why I have a problem with these brothers and sisters right they want to keep talking about the people of Peru right people of Peru oh they're just Christians oh Jose Vega show me 50 Hispanics claiming to be Israel and things of that nature right this was the founder's son where is what is he wearing people Mighty Hebrew says that these people don't teach that they're Israelites. They're just they're, they're, they're a cult and that they're just Christians. What Christians do you know where the Ephod play? He is the Levitical priest of this of this nation. After his father passed, he got the priesthood. Right? They keep talking about 50 people, right? Okay. Here's a hundred hundreds of thousands of them for you folk as you see the line extends all the way around all the way to the mountains all the way back to the mountains literally hundreds of thousands of our people right but they hate to show they, they hate to see this they hate all this right check this out right he said oh they're Christians they're Christians Check this out, right? Again, talk about our people are, are, are heathens and stuff like that, right? Look at the community. Look at our women, right? Women are powerful too, right? Check this out. What is that, people? They're doing burnt offerings burnt offerings what is that people uh oh show me Christians that do these things mighty Hebrew cuz I, 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 I again this is a fact your people don't do this your little your little crew your little camp that you roll with or whatever y'all are not even doing burnt offerings what are you talking about they burn it in front of their temple 
We've shown this plenty of times. This right here is Manessa, right? Hold on. He was a Jewish rabbi, right? In the 1600s. Manessa ben Israel, right? He was a famous scholar in the 1600s who wrote books about how the natives on this land were Israelites. So again, the white man has been knowing, those white Jews over there have been knowing that the natives of this land are the Israelites, right? Just like I, I, I pointed out how 15 million uh, Mormons believe that we're the Israelites. Again, this is addressing to the, the folk, mighty Hebrew, and things that they have been saying, okay? The people can, you know, learn about uh, who uh, Manessa was. As a matter of fact, let's go read something from that book. This is Manessa. Let's see, people read with me. Manessa ben Israel. Manessa ben Israel, also spelled Manessa, original name, Manuel Diaz Sierra, born 1604, Lisbon, died November 20, 1657. Uh, major, he, he was a major Hebraic scholar of the Jewish community of Amsterdam and founder of the modern Jewish community in England. Manessa was born into a family of Moranos, Jews of Spain and Portugal, who publicly accepted Christianity but privately practiced Judaism. After his father appeared as a penitent in an auto defe family, escaped to Amsterdam where Jewish settlement was officially authorized. Manessa, a brilliant, um, theo uh, a brilliant theological student, became the rabbi of the Portuguese Jewish congregation in Amsterdam in 1622. He founded that city, first Hebrew printing press in 1626, publishing his works in Hebrew, Latin, Spanish, and Portuguese. Among his writings, uh, Conciliador III, Volume 3, 1630 through 51 was an attempt to reconcile discriminant passages in the Bible. It established his reputation as a scholar in the Jewish and Christian communities. Manessa maintained friendships with Hugo Gusta, Gustius and Rembrandt, corresponded with Queen Christina of Sweden and was an early teacher of Benedict, uh, Benedict de uh, Spinoza. Manessa believed that the Messiah would return to lead the Jews to the Holy Land only after the dispersal throughout the world was achieved. He considered immig immigrating to, look at this people, he considered immigrating to Brazil in 1640 and reported the alleged discovery in South America of the 10 lost tribes of Israel. Again, Jewish scholar from 1640, Manessa ben Israel. Again, I'll read it again. 1640, it reported an alleged discovery in South America of the 10 lost tribes and S. the Israel, Hope of Israel, that's the title of the book, to support the settlement of Jews in Protestant, in Protestant England where their presence had been officially banned since 1290. He dictated that Latin edition of the work of 1650 of the English Parliament, right? So again, like I said, he wrote books and he was a scholar and uh, he was a, 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 a well-respected scholar, especially in Europe, right? Who wrote books about natives being Israel, right? Now we're going to read about the African, off of Wikipedia, about the, the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem, right? I'm going to read this part right here. This is a so-called those black, uh, this is for you, mighty Hebrew. <laughs> it says it is unclear the status of Israel the so-called black Israelites right it is unclear whether Israel was always end up was the end goal of the community or whether Ben Ami received another vision in 1969 where the community was in Liberia telling him to take the community to the real promised land Israel the African Hebrew Israelite community holds this uh, ambiguously does not lessen their mode um, motivations for a home in Israel. 
the group aimed to immigrate to Israel under the Israeli law of return, which states that all Jews who, who, who immigrate to Israel will be granted citizenship. However, in order to be considered Jewish under the law, a person must be born of a Jewish mother or have been converted to Judaism and not and is not an active member of another religion. As, Bami, uh, as Ben Ami and his followers did not fit this requirement, they did not qualify for citizenship. This determinants did not stop them from moving to Israel. In 1969, and the group began to move to Israel using temporary visas. Most black Hebrews have entered Israel as tourists and these temporary visas and have stayed past their visas time allowance. Initially, the African Hebrew Israelite asserted that they were that they were the only rightful inheritors of the land of Israel. They refused to convert to Judaism and assert that most Israeli Jews were not descendants of ancient Israelites. By the late 1980s, the group tempered their beliefs, meaning they changed their beliefs. They came to see Israel as a nation of many cultures, races, and religions. You see that mighty Hebrew? So no, Israel is not all um, a bunch of uh, Negroes. Even your own people acknowledge that. Members of the group continue to arrive and settle in the desert community of Demona, uh, Demona. For two decades, their population continued to grow through natural increase and illegal immigration. Throughout the 1970s, tensions between the groups and the government grew continued to arrive and settled in the desert community of, of Demona for two decades their population continued to grow through natural increase and illegal immigration throughout the 1970s tensions between the group and the government grew as the group faced low unemployment inadequate housing and attempted deportation while the government considered them illegal aliens then Ami accused the government of racism uh oh here we go guys they're pulling the racist card right and usurping the holy land while claiming that the greatest conspiracy ever conceived in the minds of men was the creation of the national homeland of Jewish people. In 1973, the International League of the Rights of Men rejected the group's claims, stating that the group made little attempt to comply with the citizenship laws of Israel. In 1981, a six-person black American to support Israeli, Israel committee delegated a, um, a delegated assessed all aspects of the community's treatment and concluded that racism was not the cause of its problems. All the leaders of Bayard Rastran called Ben Ami a dictator without the same moral standards as a democratic leader. The other dish, um, dish, um, the others dishyosh, um, ah, dishyoshiated themselves from this. They are generally not considered Jews in Israel. These, meaning, again, they, they can't prove it, people. This is the whole point. They can't prove that they're Israelites. The Israeli government, especially in the past, refused, grant to, refused to grant the group citizenship while occasionally pursuing deportation. In, in May 1990, the group was granted tourist status and visa that, were, that permitted them to work in 1992. The Congressional Black Census, uh, Census of the United States Congress intervened, leading to an agreement that the Black Hebrews will be granted temporary temporary residency if they held off on receiving new members. Meaning they can't have any more people <laughs> moving over there. At the end of 2003, the group was granted permanent uh, permanent residency status by the Israeli Interior Ministry. It is believed that in 2009. Uh, Alakim ben Israel became the first black Hebrew to, to receive Israeli citizenship without converting to Judaism or marrying an Israeli. The Israeli, the Israeli government said that more black Hebrews may be granted citizenship. So again, they couldn't even make their case and prove how they were uh, uh, the original people of that land, right? Now we're going to talk about a book. Because this, is, this book was sent to me. Uh, here it is, right? So I was dealing on Judah Nazareth's channel 
so you know trying to show people well at least show me a source prior to the 1800s of negroes uh claiming to be israelites which you that you can never do it there is no book of negroes claiming to be israelites there is no such book like they'll try to pull books of like oh look at the europeans said they saw black jews they didn't say negro but they say they saw black jews which we already already debunked all that earlier today about what they mean by black jews um but this brother tried to post this source saying well look back in the 1400s uh there was this uh um a wife of a of a general basically said that the jews the portuguese and the negroes all look the same right but the point is, is that brothers really need to read before they start posting their sources right because this is where he posted this is what he says in this book he, he quoted from this book i'm gonna read for what he said and then i'm gonna read up to debunk what, it, what this person is actually saying right uh it says watts says an interesting um, gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the jews so right here this person with is saying that the jews range in all colors from white skin to even black. especially dark were the jews of spain and portugal said that the jews hold on said that the jews were very dark says um Pritchard, the dutch uh the duchess Aberrantes' wife of napoleon's ambassador to portugal said that the jews the negro and the portuguese can be seen as a single person so he was trying to say hey look see the black jews they go the, they, they resemble the portuguese and the negro right but he didn't read up here where it says this right it says tacticus of about 90 a.d says many assert that the jews are an ethiopian race for Romans to have taken them from, for e Ethiopians is clear indication of their color since the Ethiopians were definitely black to the Romans. Ancient Jewish legends, um, legends themselves recognize a Negro strain among the Jews. Genesis rabbi reads, when the Jews returned from Babylon, their wives had become brown almost during the years of captivity. So right now it's telling you people, that the Jews would turn brown from mixing with the Hamites after the Babylonian captivity. He says, more became brown almost during the years of captivity, and a large number of the men divorced their wives because they can't because they turned dark. The divorced women probably married black men, which would which would to some extent account for the existence of black Jews. You see that people? Jews, a lot of the Jews turned dark skin from mixing after the Babylonian captivity. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom, Shalom, uh, 